and have them collide, they create a totally new class of galaxies. I create something that doesn't look anything like the original galaxies. And this is what we observe. Uh, we see those galaxies, and you can see many of them here, all those kind of round spherical uh, galaxies. These galaxies don't have this. Uh, they have very yellow, very reddish uh, 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 stellar, stellar bodies. So basically all of the stars are old. Uh, they're much more massive than the, the, uh, the disks of Andromeda or the Milky Way, of course. Uh, and they just have completely different shapes and, and different, uh, different uh, masses. Also, you might notice that none of them have these uh, obscuring uh, dust or, or ga cold gas lanes. So it tells us that not only the stars are old, we're not creating new, we're not forming new stars in those systems. The one thing that's similar between these galaxies and the, and the Milky Way, for example, is the bulge. So these are, in a way, in a sense, uh, scaled up bulges. Uh, remember the, the central yellowish bulge at the center of the, uh, uh, the centers of spiral galaxies? These are kind of like scaled up uh, bulges. And all of these bulges have a black hole at their centers. So each one of these galaxies has a black hole at the center. And it turns out that uh, the size of the, or the mass of the black hole is actually related to the, the size of the bulge, how many stars are in the bulge. And so if we start with one of those massive elliptical galaxies, uh, this, the black hole at its center is, you know, several billions of, as massive as several billion stars. So it's many, many, many stars that are condensed into this black hole and Jedida is going to say a lot more about black holes uh, soon. Uh, if you take uh, just the bulge of Andromeda, so just you know the, the yellow center, it has a black hole, a supermassive black hole, which is a few millions, as massive as a few million suns, a few millions of, of our own sun. So you see that the, the more massive galaxy has basically a more massive black hole at the center. But it, it turns out that this is really new. This is uh, from, from a couple of weeks ago. Astronomers observed the same kind of relation or the same kind of supermassive black holes uh, down to, uh, to dwarf galaxies. So down to the kind of miniature galaxies that we see uh, uh, in, in the, the local neighborhood around the, the Milky Way, for example, or Andromeda. OK, so I'm going to say one last thing about black holes. And that's uh, just how we measure the masses of, uh, of sorry, how we measure the mass of just one black hole, and that's the black hole at the center of the Milky Way. Uh, again, uh, uh, Jedi is going to say more about the, the, the more supermassive black holes. Uh, but the nice thing about the, the the black hole at the center of the Milky Way is that it's so nearby that we can actually observe the orbits of stars around it. So this is based on real simulations uh, taken with a Keck telescope uh, in Hawaii. And each one of these dots, each one of these blue uh, green dots uh, represent a star. And the star at the center uh, is where I'm going to try to convince you that we, uh, we can see a black hole or we can uh, see the, the, uh, where the black hole should be. And so this is time, this is, sorry, this is the year of observation, so it's somewhere uh, in June 1995 or something. Uh, and then you, uh, you'll see that the time, as time goes by, these stars uh, change location, and we trace the, the orbits of these stars. Let me try to stop it. Uh, once, right there. Uh, of course not, I'll try it again. Oops. Uh, <coughs> so, right there. So you will see that now it's 2009, so 14 years later. Uh, you see that at least one of these, at least one of these stars uh, completed a full orbit, a full orbit around the, the whatever mass is in the, the center of that. So the nice thing about orbits is that we can, if you tell me what the orbit is, uh, I can tell you exactly what the mass, how massive the object is at the center of that orbit, or whatever created that orbit. So just like 
if I know uh, the orbit of Earth, I can tell you exactly, I, I'm not going to be able to tell you anything about Earth itself, but I'm going to be able to tell you very precisely what the mass of the Sun is. The same, uh, exactly the same. I'm not going to be able to say anything about the star that goes around the black hole, but I'm going to be able to say very precisely what the mass of that object is. And when I know the mass, and I know the size, or at least I can put some limits on the size, just, again, based on the orbit, there's only one thing that's actually plausible uh, that can live there, and that's a supermassive black hole. Just because, again, the mass of this thing is a few million suns. It's as massive as a few million suns. I mean, you can't take a few million suns and condense them and not create a black hole. And again, Jedi is going to say much more about that. So, uh, kind of just to quickly summarize. So, okay, so we know about the two types of galaxies, uh, and we know that our colliding our colliding spirals create uh, those elliptical galaxies. So we have some some uh, timeline. Uh, and then Rachel and, and Jedida are gonna say more about these uh, these two points, the evolution of these massive galaxies. So, or in other words, what happened next? Okay, so you created them by colliding two galaxies. Now what? Uh, and then Jedi is going to say a lot more about the supermassive black holes uh, that lie or live in the in the centers of those galaxies. So I think this one I'll just.